Welcome back everyone for the uh, second stream of the day here from Cologne, slash Cologne, uh, Germany. It's live at Gamescom, Crusader Kings 2, the next expansion. I'm here with Hendrik Fideos. That's right. Hello everyone. Um, we're going to reveal to you <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, the name of the next expansion at least. Uh, I've already talked about it quite a lot in the dev diaries and so on, so I don't think it's going to come as a huge surprise to you guys. But um, we do have a trailer. <laughs> Roll the trailer. Roll the trailer. Peggy 16. मैं आपको बताता हूँ एक अनोखे और प्रतापी साम्राज्य के बारे में बड़े-बड़े रेगिस्तानों और ऊंचे पहाड़ों से भी आगे पूर्व में मौजूद है ऊंघता हुआ एक ड्रैगन। हम इस पूर्वी साम्राज्य के साथ सदियों से कारोबार करते आए हैं और यहां से हमारे लिए बेहतरीन सामान भी आता रहा है रेशम जो बहुत नरम है और मजबूत भी पोर्सली जो हमारे सेरेमिक से कहीं बेहतर है कागज बेहद पतला और टिकाऊ विद्वानों और लेखकों के लिए जिसका मूल्य सोने से भी ज्यादा है लेकिन अब इस सम्राट की नीयत बदल रही है अब ये अपने साम्राज्य को और भी भव्य बनाने के सपने देखने लगा है अब इसका जुनून कारोबार नहीं बल्कि जीत और दमन है तो दोस्तों इस ड्रैगन की नींद अब खुल चुकी है और इसकी लालची निगाहें अब हमारी सरजमीन को घूरने लगी है चाहे हम बातचीत करें या युद्ध लेकिन जो भी करें जल्दी करें वरना बहुत जल्द ये ड्रैगन गरजते हुए हमारी सरहदों के दरवाजे तक पहुंच जाएगा Crusader Kings 2, J Dragon. That's right. There you have it. Uh, and the trailer is pretty good. Pretty cool. Uh, you might think it's an expansion about India, <laughs> yes. Uh, but it's not necessarily about India at all. It is, of course, about China, um, mm -hmm. unless it was perfectly clear. <laughs> no, it's yes. I, I but think I, I did love the Hindi though in the trailer. I thought that was a pretty it, nice touch. It was. I agree. Um, now, one of the, I, I mean, people have been talking about adding China to Crusader Kings 2, both from like a fan perspective, and mm. I know that people have been talking about it internally as well. The way China has been added in, in this expansion is not necessarily, they're not always on the map. Can you talk a bit about your, the problem and the solution right, to, of course. to adding China to Crusader Kings 2? Uh, yeah, you know, as you know, we expanded a map quite a lot in the uh, Rajas of India expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was a huge expansion with a lot of new provinces. The game slowed down a bit <laughs> after we released that. Yeah. And since everyone got that slowdown uh, because it was part of the free patch, we decided that it might not be a good idea to subject you people to that again. Uh, so what we've done is we've, we're adding China without really adding mm -hmm. China yeah. as uh, you know, the territory of China. Because that's one of the things you were talking about when, when, you, when you showed uh, this to, to us like in marketing the first time. Mm -hmm. The fact that it used to be that on the eastern side of the map is essentially the end of the world. And of course, that's not the case. Yeah, exactly. I was uh, never entirely happy with the way that the eastern edge of the map feels like the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's, yes. there's nothing east of here. Uh, whereas in reality, it should be a dynamic and interesting region, uh, smack dab in the middle of the Silk Road, basically, mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of trade flowing through, a lot of interaction with China. And especially in certain dates, China is actually on the map. Uh, and now we can properly represent that. Okay. And so, <laughs> it sounds very dismissive. That was not my intent. Uh, I, can, you, can you quickly go through some of the like the main features before? Because we're going to do some uh, gameplay examples right. here, here in a while. But I thought we could go through quickly some of the... What, what's actually... What do you get? Oh, for sure. Uh, what you get is basically um, an interaction screen with China. Okay. Uh, you get China doing uh, all kinds of things. Um, and... Uh, is this, uh, <laughs> it's is this is this shown? <laughs> yes. Right? Okay. Yes. So you can see we what are, I'm doing. We are in full screen now. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, so, as you can tell, probably tell, uh, Tibet has been added. It's part of the free patch. Mm -hmm. So there are about 40 new provinces, uh, or more than that actually. Um, and this is a an interesting region. Um, 
And in this save game I prepared, uh, I'm playing as, I'm not playing in Tibet, I, I'm playing as the Lord of Kucho, <laughs> right on the border uh, yeah. with China here. So, so I guess this is kind of telling all, all of my, well, my education when it comes to history. But what's, actually, what's happening in this region at this time? Well, uh, this is 868 actually, uh, but there's also a start date uh, in 769. Mm -hmm. and at that point in time, uh, China had just retreated from the Tarim Basin uh, and the region. It actually fought an apocalyptic battle against the Abbasids near t the Talas River up here. Mm -hmm. uh, and they lost to the Abbasids, which kind of ended uh, a period of Chinese expansion. But this is 100 years down the line. Uh, the Tibetan Empire has fallen apart again. Uh, but China still has <laughs> a slight presence up here in the corner of the map. Uh, so what happens when China is on the map is it's not actually China, China. We represent it as uh, the governor uh, of the governorate to pacify the West, which I think is a, <laughs> is a beautiful name yes. uh, for this uh, protectorate. So it's kind of a, a subunit of the Chinese empire, but it's emperor level, as you can mm -hmm. see. China itself... Uh, actually exists in this new little screen uh, down here. It's uh, still the Tang Empire has survived, apparently, uh, in this game. And you can see up here uh, what the emperor's current policy is. In, in this case, uh, it's a female, it's a woman emperor. Um, and she is expansionist. Mm -hmm. This is a very rare thing. Uh, China is usually uh, just status quo. Yeah. Uh, it's open to trade. It wants some tributaries, but that's it. But sometimes, very rarely, yeah. uh, it can open, uh, it can change uh, to expansionist, basically. And that can happen especially when the Mongols invade China or the Jurchens mm -hmm. for a while after the old dynasty has fallen. Yeah. And we, we have some questions in Twitch chat, and I think oh. we should just confirm that. Sure. So in, within this expansion, you can actually not, not play as China. You cannot, like, you cannot play as China. Uh, the point is to interact with China instead yeah. in various interesting ways. And you should feel the reach of China mm -hmm. as well. And, yeah. I, and I'm going to go through that all. So this is the current policy. China can also be isolationist. Uh, that means that they're not really interested so much <laughs> in interacting with the rest of the world. Um, this is the current situation in China. Uh, at the moment, it's stable. So there's not much going on. Mm -hmm. um, but that can also turn into unrest, civil wars. It can be invaded by Mongols, for example. And you will see that here. And all of these changes to policy and status uh, will be sent out to all players via news, so you will know what's going on in China unless you toggle it off mm -hmm. here. Uh, this is the dynasty uh, of the current house, and of course this is the emperor, or empress in this case, and the western governor. But the core of the system is really uh, this value here, <laughs> which I have zero of at the moment. It seems like zero uh, is a bad thing. Uh, zero yeah. is kind of useless. It yeah. can't go negative, okay. but, but zero is pretty bad. Uh, this is called grace. It's the emperor's grace towards you, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> basically. Yeah. And you can spend that as a form of currency. So here we have some, some things you can, uh, you can do to gain grace uh, with the empire or with China. You can send them money. Simple enough. Uh, you can ask to become a tributary. And this is a new tributary system. It's not really like the old one. Mm -hmm. um, Chinese tributaries um, cannot call China in yeah. into war to help them, but they can raise a special uh, army unit instead of Chinese troops, which okay. is pretty good. Uh, so it's a bit different. You can send a eunuch <laughs> to the emperor. Always appreciated, of course. Of, of course. Of course. Uh, you can send him a concubine uh, for the imperial harem. Um, now, uh, it can't just be any any peasant girl, sort of. It has to be someone significant, so you have to sacrifice a daughter mm -hmm. uh, or a sister or something. We're still adding more of these, so, but those are some. Yeah. Um, but the really interesting thing is what you can get out of this system, what you use the grace for. Um, and, you know, it's a lot of stuff. You can... Uh, it's everything from just a temporary peace treaty, so you're safe from Chinese mm -hmm. aggression. Um, but through, you know, as Chinese court physician, of course, Chinese medicine is pretty good. Yeah. All the way down to uh, marrying into the imperial family, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, you get a lot of prestige for that, and you also get access to her honor guard <laughs> unit. Uh, we're still working on more cool effects for that, actually. Uh, and the best one, or arguably most powerful one, is uh, a request yeah. that China come in uh, and attack one of your rivals. Yeah, and I, gu I guess we should mention that. I'm sure people know already, but we're, we're running on 
uh, possibly not the hottest of code, but it is it is code code that's still changing. It's still very much in development. Yes, um, and I'll be uh, playing this hot code uh, every Monday, starting this Monday. Yes, <laughs> um, so you can tune into that and, and see more as the expansion develops. Uh, but say that I'm playing, you know, the Byzantines, yeah. uh, and I. I would like someone to take down the Abbasids and Notch. Uh, or yeah, the that's it, that seems like a smart thing to do. It, yeah. it could be for me. Uh, I could work up towards a lot of grace with China and ask them to go in and fight the Abbasids. It didn't go so well last time, but yeah. you know, it, it, <laughs> yeah. could, it could work out this time. I mean, if they really like you, they're like, hey, sure, we'll, we'll come over. Yeah. We'll now, that would not re uh, result in actual conquest by the Abbasids of, of yeah. China but it would destroy the top tier uh, title, the empire itself, yeah. so it will fall apart, which is still very, very useful. Mm -hmm. um, going back into the screen again, you can see here the Chinese tributaries. China will be interested in having tributaries, of course, unless mm -hmm. they're isolationist at the moment. They're peace deals. Uh, you can also see what the emperor currently likes. Uh, and the cool thing about this is it's going to affect the AI of course, uh -huh. uh, how the uh, empire behaves. But it's also uh, going to affect how much grace I get out of various things, gifts. If the emperor likes eunuchs, you know, I, I'm going to get more uh, out of gifting eunuchs to the yeah. uh, empire. And uh, if he doesn't like, say, Altaic cultures, um, I will get less grace if I am yeah. <laughs> an Altaic person myself, and so on. So that's the gist of, of the interactions. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to realize as well that uh, the, the status of China is going to have far-reaching effects uh, and the policy as well uh, of what's going on in the West. So when a civil war ends, it's quite possible um, that a displaced Chinese faction, a rebel general mm -hmm. or a displaced prince or something, even a sort of a domino effect on some Sinicized Altaic tribe uh, could be coming out of the East uh, and you know, seeking some territory of their own, like happened with the Karakitai, yeah. for example. Yes, of course. I know all about the Karakitai. <laughs> <laughs> as you should, as everyone yes. should. They were pretty cool. <laughs> the Western. It, it, that's, what, that's one thing I, I feel like I learn from CK2 every, every day, is that I don't know enough about history. No. Uh, well, you learn. Um, Slowly but surely. So uh, a lot of things can come out of China. We also we made some changes to how raiding adventurers work as well. You can okay. interact a little bit more with them. Uh, because what I really want to avoid here is the feeling that uh, India especially, um, but also the whole region here, Central Asia, uh, feels like the corner of the world. <laughs> yeah. So that should not happen. So there should be a lot more interaction now with adventurers coming out of the Muslim world, like the Ghasnavids uh, and more generic ones, and you should be able to interact with them more as well. Mm -hmm. And there should be stuff going on, both from the East and yeah. the West. So that's the ambition. Uh, and here, of course, you can see uh, the new Silk Road. Um, I saw some questions there in the chat before yes. uh, that we've, we've actually reworked the Silk Road quite a lot. Um, most of that uh, is not part of the paid <laughs> expansion, so we're going to get some advantages of that uh, anyway. Um, but what we've tried to, uh, well, actually, it's a couple of things that we tried to address. One of them was that uh, it wasn't very interesting that you could build trade posts in every single province along the way, mm -hmm. especially since uh, your vassals, <laughs> the actual province holders, were the ones in control of yeah. the trade post. So as an independent ruler, it was kind of not that interesting, to be honest, since your vassals controlled most of these trade posts. And there were too many of them as well. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is now there are only trade posts in certain predefined locations. Uh, on the other hand, it's always the top liege that controls them. Yeah. And they can be improved a lot further uh, than before. There, there are more buildings in yeah. there, basically. Uh, also, uh, as should be obvious to anyone who has played around with the Silk Road, there are a lot more routes here. Uh, and that's part of the solution to another issue where um, the Silk Road could be completely closed off mm -hmm. if there was a siege or a battle or something going yeah. on along the way. Now that's much harder, uh, not just because there are more routes, uh, obviously, um, but also you know, a siege or a battle will only strangle the flow yeah. <laughs> of the goods a little bit. It won't cut it off completely. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things. You can negotiate with China for favored status as well, um, which is quite useful. Uh, you will get more out of the trade on the Silk Road. So that's one use for Grace. 
And uh, I think I'm going to show you uh, actually what's going on in, yes. in this save game. Yes, <laughs> let's, let's, let's get actually into, into the game itself. I mean, so what's actually happening here um, is uh, China has decided to attack me to make me a tributary, which is uh, worrying, to say the least, because I'm playing a very weak um, desert nation in the Tarim Basin. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing going for this place is really the Silk Road, if you can make money of that. And you can see the Western governorate here isn't really bringing uh, the full force of China no. to the table, but it does have uh, a couple of troops. How many uh, troops do we have? We don't have enough. Uh, oh, that's, so <laughs> that's, 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 that's never. So that's the situation is looking pretty grim yeah. in, in this save game. So we're like, oh, the, at least they didn't bring the ring their whole forces, but it's still way more than we have. Exactly. Well, it's it's it would be a winnable war, I think, uh, uh -huh. but we'll we'll see what I can do about it. Uh, so I'm going to start up using another new feature in the expansion, the rally point system, mm -hmm. to just showcase that a little bit. I'm going to set a rally point before. I raise my troops, uh, and they will automatically head down there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which should save people uh, some micromanagement. Yeah, so you don't ha you don't have to do the big square, uh, select everyone and. No, but well, if you have some overseas territories, yes. you, you, <laughs> you still have to do that, unfortunately. Uh, right. Let's see if we have any mercenaries to hire as well. Well, I don't have much money. Um, hmm. No. I cannot afford these people. They would simply turn against me immediately. <laughs> well, we're going to see uh, how it goes a little bit. And if it seems unwinnable, uh, I'm just going to fold and accept the fact that I'm now a Chinese tributary. I mean, if they really want you to, uh, to be a tributary, I guess. Well, it's, it's not the end of the world. No. Um, you can still play. It's, you still, you actually, it has some benefits because you enjoy the protection of China from now on. And you get some grace <laughs> <laughs> all the time. Um, yeah, he has 4,000 troops there. It's, uh, it's well, I, I see that we have 13 up to the north, so that's good. Yep. But it's not enough. <laughs> nah, this is, this is probably not going to go well. Um, oh. By the way... Um, here are some cool uh, units, and uh, these cosmetic things uh, will be included in this expansion. Mm -hmm. It should be worth mentioning. You know, the, you have the Chinese portraits. Yep. You have uh, 3D units. Uh, you have music, and uh, Tibetan portraits as well. Uh, so that's a different set of portraits. <laughs> so we're trying to reduce all this, uh, shall we say? DLC abundance yeah. that we have because I think it's it's suitable. All these things fit the theme yeah. of this expansion very well. Oh well, that's that's. Oh, I have a son. Great. Uh, well, not I, perhaps. I mean, are you the duke? In which case, it was your son. It was my son. Yeah, I think so. Or was it your son? Yes, my I have a yes. grandson. <laughs> yeah, there you go. No, I think um, I think it's not even worth fighting this uh, battle here, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna suicide. I'm gonna ask, offer my surrender, and see if the empress will be gracious enough. I mean, she does like tributaries, so I'm excited. Yes. Speed it up a bit. All right. To the craven lover of heathens. Oh well. Um, I'm now your tributary, so I guess I have just kowtowed to the Empress. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now you can see here that I'm a tributary. Um, so, so what does that actually mean then? In, in this case, do you uh, are we are we giving them money or resources? Uh, we are, yes. Uh, we're giving them half uh, of our income. No. Oh. It should show up here soonish. Um, I'll just disband all these troops. Tick for a bit. So yeah, tribute. It's a fairly significant sum of money. Um, so that that's not good. Of well, course. that stinks. But I am pretty free to act uh, the way I want to, and uh, I should be gaining some grace as well over time. Okay, so uh, two monthly. Hmm? 
Uh, it, wasn't it we were gaining two per month? Uh, yes, I think so, unless we rebalanced yeah. it. Yes, two per month. So that's one of the ways you can gain <laughs> grace. Of course, it comes with some, some downsides as well. Yeah, like giving up half our money. Exactly. Right. Um, what else can I show you guys right now? I mean, well, I mean, what are we, what are we going to do with all of this now that we're uh, now that we're out of pocket, as it were? How do we, how do we throw our new weight around in that we're friends with China? Can we do that somehow? Uh, or are we just, are well, we just stuck being nice to everyone <laughs> for for we, the moment? We can't immediately uh, unless I can, uh, I can send them a eunuch. Uh, let's see. Um, this is just some court here. Poor guy. They're going to do nasty things to you. Um, at 73 grace. And yes, exactly. uh, okay, so he dis uh, she dislikes uh, master and religions as well, which is pretty bad for us, being a Zervanite um, Manichaean. That's a, that's a bit of a problem. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a bit problematic. I could cheat, of course. <laughs> yeah, but... Um, but I don't think there's any use. No. Now, um, I should mention also that this whole system here is completely moddable. You can add your own off-map powers uh, to wor that work in mostly the same way, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. You can customize a lot of it. There's going to be another button here. Uh, it should be very useful for mods if you can produce the, <laughs> the graphics uh, you like. Uh, you could call it anything, really. Uh, and I, I'm really looking forward to see what modders do. Yeah, with that. Oh, definitely. <laughs> um, other things, for some reason, people don't really always like playing in the East. I can't imagine why. I'd because it's, it's uh, especially with J Dragon. But we're throwing all, everyone a bone, basically, with this expansion as well. You already saw the rally points, uh, but we've also added. Uh, that's a I lot of car links. That's a lot of car links, <laughs> as usual. Uh, we've added eight new CBs. Uh, okay. Eight new Cassus Bellies that you can use if you feel a little bit constrained, uh, which you usually do if you're playing a Christian. Mm -hmm. Now, they're not intended to replace Fabricate Claim as such, uh, so many of them are quite situational, mm -hmm. but there should be something <laughs> you can do, even if it's at a cost yeah. uh, most of the time these days uh, with this patch. So seven of those new CBs are part of the expansion. One is free, mm -hmm. uh, and that is, um, appropriately enough, the free captives <laughs> cast a spell. Oh, okay, yeah. That's so free the prisoners. You can, uh, you know, when those evil Vikings come and, and steal uh, your daughter yeah, away you as a concubine, you can steal them back, or imprison your courtiers and relatives. Uh, you can now attack them yeah. and free them from bondage, which is a good thing. Finally. There's also a lot of things uh, in the patch. Uh, there's always little uh, GUI improvements. You might have noticed it already here in the title view, for example. You can now see the line of succession for each title in the game. Oh, that's nice. Uh, so you can sort of plan yeah. who to kill to inherit titles, <laughs> so et cetera, et cetera. Kill your ambitious son so he doesn't take the throne and yeah. then uh, give, it to <laughs> give it to someone who's uh, a lot more harder to play. Yeah, no, uh, it's one of those things. You, you could always see it in the tooltip, uh, but then how to get to those characters, and you know, if they have the exact same name, like those two, <laughs> yeah, uh, it could be a bit problematic. So we we do have a question here. So with the new Casus Belli for free prisoners, what happens if I just execute the prisoners when someone declares war on me? I, I assume the CBA still stands. The CB, uh, I don't think it. Uh, that's a very good question, actually. I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think it invalidates. Um, I guess the war should go on. I, I feel like you can still you be like, well, give me their bodies then. Yeah, you should get money or something. Mm -hmm. You know, you can still win the war and, and get some yeah. compensation. So I don't think it's automatically ended or anything like that. There's a whole slew of new game rules as well. Uh, I really like uh, adding more mm -hmm. <laughs> game rules. Um, some of them tie into the expansion uh, because you know it's pretty hard to interact with China, for example, if you're playing up in Iceland or Ireland or somewhere. Yeah. So China has a diplomatic range, um, and you have to be within that range to interact with China. However, you can turn that off as a game rule if you don't feel like yeah. uh, you want to play under those uh, constraints, uh, essentially. And there's, uh, there's a bunch of other game rules as well that you get with the free patch. And it's funny, one of our uh, uh, their QA folks <laughs> uh, 
is working on a little map revision, has been working on it for quite some while, actually, to make the whole Middle East more interesting. Oh, as well. nice. So yeah, that's, one, that's, one of the, that's some, something I've been asking uh, Daniel on Stellaris from time to time. Mm -hmm. Uh, w whenever there's a new expansion, so so uh, saying like, okay, so what are your new, some of your new favorite ways of playing? Do you have any 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 good suggestions? If uh, once someone gets J Dragon and just wants to, w where are some good gameplay experiences on on the new map? Well, I would definitely suggest playing in Tibet somewhere. Uh, Tibet looks quite different in the various uh, bookmarks, mm -hmm. um, but you know sometimes it's. Uh, you can play as a Bern ruler, which is a new religion. Uh -huh. It's a form of paganism. It's actually the Tibetan native religion, so to speak, or ancient religion. Uh, some are Buddhist. Um, Tibetans have a different government form. It's called monastic feudal. Uh -huh. uh, it has some different characteristics to normal feudalism. For example, you can hold temple holdings without penalties. Uh, and of course, Tibet is ideally situated to uh, control parts of the Silk Road mm -hmm. and you know, conquer parts of the Silk Road as well and to interact with China. And of course, you were also threatened by China. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'd suggest Tibet. Uh, and I also suggest um, Northern India, or pretty much anywhere in Central Asia, should be quite interesting uh, with these new mechanics. But you don't have to play there. You, you know, you can still interact with China all the way over to Byzantium uh, due to the range of the Silk Road, uh, pretty much. So. If you're in, in the range of China, you can talk to them, you can ask for boons, you can send them various gifts, uh, you can hire Chinese mercenaries. <laughs> Which so I mean, who, who doesn't want to hire Chinese mercenaries? Exactly. Um, and there are all kinds of cool boons. Um, yeah. So. so, so speaking of, of China, and since since we know that there are a lot of people that that play CK2 in basically in Europe, how how much bait on Say normal settings. How much can they interact with China? What's going to happen if I'm, if I am one of the carlings, for example? If you're one of the carlings, uh, you might hear some rumors from time to time, but it's unlikely that you will uh, yeah. see much of China at all, uh, unless you turn off that range mm -hmm. thing that I talked about. And then if we're down in Byzantium, it's y you talked about it earlier. You can possibly convince uh, some of the Chinese armies to maybe, you know deal with some troublesome other regions that you don't necessarily want to deal yeah, with Yeah, right but I now. mean, uh, the Byzantines can fully interact with China. Okay. So they can get all the other boons as well. Uh, they are the sort of end point mm -hmm. of the Silk Road, so they are in range. Um, and again, I didn't go through all, <laughs> all of these boons and perks no. you can get, but it, it's a lot of stuff. and. Uh, we hope to add a few more as so, well. So are there any of these the current boons that are in, in the system that you particularly uh, like or, <laughs> or enjoy? Like, is, is this something you strive to get as, as often uh, as you can? Yeah, of? absolutely. You know, it depends on your strategy here. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to save up a lot of grace, yeah. uh, to, uh, for example, for an imperial marriage or to get China to attack someone else, uh, then you probably have to save it. Um, on the other hand, if you're happy building up your realm, you might request a uh, scholar bureaucrat, a Mandarin, mm -hmm. <laughs> to come in, which will reduce the build costs and times uh, yeah. when you upgrade holdings and so on. Uh, and I guess, I guess one of the questions I, I, I want to know the answer to as well. So currently it's, it's Li uh, Ping Song, which are probably horribly mispronounced. She's, she's the emperor or empress. Mm -hmm. uh, when she is removed from power, what happens to the grace that we have accrued? With if, her. Uh, yeah, the grace uh, follows basically the Chinese dynasty. Okay, so as so long as the Tang, uh, Tang Empire. I, exactly. So if the dynasty is overthrown, uh, that means I lose all the grace, mm -hmm. which, is a, which is a bummer, really. But you, know, you have to plan for that as well. And again, keep an eye on what's going on in China. Is there a civil war? Um, so might be a good time to spend that grace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> G give, me, give me all of those scholars while, exactly. while we can. Yeah, so here is, here is the diplomatic uh, map mode as well. You can see the range that China has, uh, and you can see the fact that the Byzantine emperor can also talk. 
yeah. to his counterpart. Okay, so what, what do the different colors mean here then? So the, I, I guess the blue is these regions can talk to can talk to China, mm -hmm. but what is the, the purple and the orange? Well, this is China itself, or rather okay. the Western governorate. Okay, yeah. Uh, and this uh, is the color of tributary states. Um, so in this case, uh, China has me and another mm -hmm. duchy uh, as tributaries. And normally you would see this grow uh, quite a lot, and you would see the tributaries recede uh, during uh, times of Chinese isolation. Uh, yeah, because they're, I mean they're currently expansionistic, so they want they want they want to get out there and you yeah know, meet no, people. This is a this is a very rare occasion. It should only happen maybe twice per game, um, and you should only see sort of a major Chinese invasion uh -huh. maybe once per game yeah. really. Uh, but you should see one. I think that's it's more fun. We did we did learn some things from um, originally actually the Mongol invasions. Mm -hmm which come out of the blue, and there's not much you can do yeah. to prevent them, basically. Uh, if you happen to be playing on the eastern edge of the map, or the previous eastern edge of the map, the Mongols would come riding out suddenly and trash you, and that wasn't much fun at all. No. Um, same thing with our somewhat jokey expansion, you know, yes. Sunset Invasion, mm -hmm. with the Aztecs. I've uh, heard about it. They would come out of nowhere. Well, there would be some warning, maybe, but you didn't know where they would land, and so on. So with this system, uh, you can preempt uh, a lot of Chinese hostility by being on friendly terms with China, and you will get some warning uh, about what's going to happen, mm -hmm. basically. So hopefully it's a more friendly, <laughs> friendly invasion, <Yes. laughs> if you will. Uh, Everyone's just super happy that you showed up. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's China. Hello. Right. Um, okay. Well, I, I mean, if we've gone through uh, some of the stuff currently, like you said, we're we're on hot code and this is still in development, so so things will change. Uh, let's see if we have any questions from uh, Twitch chat before uh, before we wrap this up. Let's see if there's. I'm sure there's some that we we can't answer for different reasons, but there might be some that uh, that's uh, you know as <laughs> answerable at the moment. Let's uh, see if there are any good questions. Oh, oh yeah, we can you can you marry the emperor or empress? Uh, no, you can't marry the emperor or empress themselves, but you can marry into their family. We're still working on a, a little bit on what that means exactly. Mm -hmm. Being married to a Chinese concubine or yeah. daughter of the Chinese emperor, for example. Someone asked about Tangut culture as well. Yes, here is Tangut culture <laughs> right here on the map. Um, let's show the religious map mode. Now bear in mind that this is an 869. Uh, it's well, it's very close to what it will look like in uh, 867. That start date. So there's uh, the Kurmasta religion. That's also new. Mm -hmm. For example, it's it's one of those interesting challenges. If you want a really tough okay. starting position, um, you can make that a campaign. Uh, the Bon Fate, of course, that I mentioned before, uh, the Chinese uh, paganism. There is Taoism. Uh, let's see, I don't have they converted to that. No, they haven't. But, you know, there is a Taoist religion that the Han Chinese have, of course. Han is the Chinese culture. Mm -hmm. um, and the Western governorate operates under a different government form. Uh, you can't play with this, uh, yeah. but it's, it's tailored for Chinese administration, basically. A Confucian bureaucracy. But on the other hand, you can convert to Taoist. Yeah, which is pretty okay. cool, yeah. uh, and play as that. Cool, what are the questions? Did China have gunpowder at this time? As far as I know, they did, uh, using it for fireworks and stuff. Can we conquer China? Uh, that's something I really don't want to... <laughs> We're talking so about so much. We're uh, not. At we're, not we're, uh, we're, we're not. We're we're not at a point where we have a good answer for that. No, I guess is <laughs> the answer to that question. Uh, uh, what are possible interactions when hostile to China? Oh, that's basically the same yeah. question. What game is this? It's Crusader Kings Two. Yeah, with J Dragon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so if a Byzantine emperor takes Egypt or far enough east. He can already communicate uh, by default, basically, because the Silk Road uh, extends uh, that far. I, I guess the question then is, what about other, like, if we if we send some, say, if we send some Scots 
down to down to Egypt. Yes. Would they then be able to communicate with China? Yes. You are then in range and should be able to communicate yeah. with so China. So it's it's just a question of getting uh, in range if you want to talk to if you if you wanna if you wanna ring them up and go like, hey, what's up? You you wanna have any uh, you wanna have a eunuch? <laughs> you maybe, wanna have a eunuch here, have maybe, one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was trying out the system the first time, and the only person that qualified was my poor grandfather. <laughs> I could send him to China as a eunuch, uh, but I, I just couldn't do that. <laughs> it just felt wrong. Uh, do the Empress Emperor have a character page? Yes, but it's, uh, it's a bit different, as you can see. Uh, you don't know exactly what skills or, or traits the Empress... You, you just know that she has a bitching hat on. Exactly. Well, you do know what she uh, likes yeah. and dislikes <laughs> as well. Um, how do we feel about the future of CK2? Uh, well, we're, this is not the last expansion, um, but we're sort of reaching the end <laughs> yeah. of the expansion cycle. So I can say that much. Um, as for CK3, I, of course, I can't say anything. Can you kidnap the Empress? No. We uh, intentionally blocked that. That would be strange. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Amur wants to know, if can, the, can the AI call China against you? Like you, you uh, explained earlier how the Byzantines could, could possibly get some, uh, get some help from China to, pros uh, to you know, dismantle a kingdom. Is, mm -hmm. is that something the AI can use against you? Uh, at the moment, I don't think the AI does use that. Uh, but I'll have to double check with the team, actually. Yeah. There's no particular reason why, why not, except, well, it could be quite annoying, really, <laughs> when yeah, I think about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get new technology from China? Yes, in a, in a way. Uh, one of these boons is um, an administrator who uh, slowly, over time, builds little province modifiers or like buildings in your provinces that are, well, they represent technology, mm -hmm. basically, and increase income and stuff. When's Vicky 3? I, I, we answered this last game's call oh before 2048. <coughs> Jeez. Well, at least it's, uh, you know, it's encouraging <laughs> that there are so many Victoria 3 fans out yes. there. So. Could, al could, <laughs> cool. also, could also be one who's very, very persistent and has a lot of accounts. Uh, well, I guess it's theoretically possible. Bo bo both options are available. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh <laughs> All right, cultures. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's show some cultures as well. So here are some interesting cultures. And we've done some changes there as well, of course. But like the astute among you will notice. Uh, Hoi 5. Oh, <laughs> my like God. I, I don't think we should get into more sequel to it because we're it's never going to end well. We're getting ahead of ourselves here, yeah. I think. Uh, uh, that said, though, I think we are... Uh, I guess I guess we should, uh, we should put a cork in it and end it here because... We, we do have a paradox party to get to. Yeah, it's time we, to get partying. Yeah, we don't <laughs> want to be late. We've, we've been here for too long, and it's finally, it's finally time. I know that Susie's sitting here uh, to the left of me, and we, we've been here till like 10 in the evening, uh, both nights so far, just uh, recording stuff for, that will come out in, in the future. Uh, on other channels. Uh, but thank you so much for uh, being with us uh, through these uh, three days. If you missed anything, it will be up on, on the YouTubes on Paradox Extra. Uh, Crusader Kings 2, J Dragon, you guys will start playing it on Monday yep. on the, on the uh, normal stream. The plan is to start using Hot Code on Monday. Uh, also, stay tuned for more Dev Diaries, of course. Yes. Uh, and me and Susie will be back for Facebook Live. Uh, later tonight when we're at the party. Susie, have I missed anything? Uh, I don't think so. Good. <laughs> that means that we're going to say uh, goodbye for now and see you guys uh, soon. And thanks so much for watching. Bye, folks. Goodbye. Bye.